Hey everybody, welcome back to the Matt Report. As always, I'm your host Matt, uh, mattreport.com, mattreport.com slash subscribe to join the mailing list. Uh, special episode today, we're doing a dual interview, which was supposed to be like a quad interview, but uh, we had some scheduling issues. But that's okay because we have the best of the bunch here. Uh, before we dive into that, I want to say, uh, I want to thank uh, our sponsor, WP Site Care. Uh, provides proactive updates, backup security, and support for from real people uh, to keep your words, WordPress sites up and running, working, and online, and they'll support you with any of uh, the questions uh, or concerns you may have with your WordPress site. So thanks to those guys for sponsoring uh, the Matt Report in today's special episode. Uh, so without further ado, Lisa Saban-Wilson and Scott Bollinger of I don't even know. I didn't even ask you guys before I started. Do I say App Presser? Do I say Web Dev Studios? Do I say Super WordPress Empire? What is it? Who is it? Who are you guys? What do you do? Definitely App Presser. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll yeah. go with Super WP Empire. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, Scott, why don't you lead off? Uh, who are you? What do you do? Sure, Scott Bollinger, um, co-founder of App Presser. And um, I'm pretty much a front-end developer and uh, focused on themes and stuff like that. But with AppPressor, obviously, there's been a lot more other development alongside that. But um, you can find us at AppPressor.com and me at uh, Twitter at, at Scott Bollinger. Sweet. And Lisa, I think some people might know you, but who are you and what do you do? Uh, Co-founder of AppPressor. Um, also with Web Dev Studios with Brad Williams and Brian Messenlander, my partners over there. And um, you can find me on Twitter at Lisa Sabin Wilson. Awesome. Uh, so fresh new product on the scene, uh, App Presser helps people build uh, apps out of WordPress. Um, I should say iOS apps, um, and eventually probably Android apps and, and such like that. But let's before we get that far into the into the product discovery, how did this idea come about, uh, Scott? We're, we're, where were you taking a shower and all of a sudden you were like, you know what, we need to build iOS apps on WordPress. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was actually, so in 2012, uh, Matt Mullenweg, he, in his uh, State of the Word address, he started talking about apps. And, um, you know, I think everybody kind of perked up a little bit when they heard that and sort of thought of the possibilities and everything. And I didn't really think a whole lot of it because I was doing, you know, press coders and themes and stuff and wasn't really thinking about apps. Um, in 2013, when he mentioned um, apps again, I was kind of like, I, I don't really know, really know if he was talking about mobile apps necessarily. He might have been thinking more about web apps and stuff. But to me, I sort of thought mobile apps. And then um, I had heard in, was it in 2012, Lisa, that he talked about the your guys' apps, or was it 2013? Both. He did both. both. Okay. Both. 2013. So yeah, so as he was talking about apps with WordPress, he mentioned Web Dev Studios and the apps that they had done for, um, I think, the Dallas Museum of Art and was it the YMCA? Yeah. Or, yeah. And um, so uh, actually, on the plane flight home from working at San Francisco, I kind of was thinking like, hey, you know, somebody should do mobile apps for WordPress. You know, like nobody's doing that. It sounds really cool. And um, just obviously was like, if I, you know, I would like to pursue this, and if I'm going to pursue it, I'm going to have to do it with web dev because they're the ones who are making all the apps with WordPress already. They're the obvious choice. And um, so I'd met Brad a couple times at uh, WordCamps and uh, just met Lisa real quick in passing at WordCamp San Francisco, but um, just sort of approached Brad with the idea and... Um, after you know a lot of deliberation, I think on their side, um, maybe Lisa can elaborate on that part. But um, we sort of just f formed up and said, "Let's let's do this." You know? mm. The the interesting thing for the for the first time WordPress entrepreneurs that are out there, the folks who are just getting into all this, and they might be struggling with uh, just building that typical like brochure site out of WordPress that we see all the time. You know, homepage, about page, product page, contact page, right? Um, they might not even be thinking about um, apps or app development, or they might not even understand the fact that WordPress can handle this stuff. Uh, Lisa, specifically on that project, um, uh, on the art uh, art museum project, what was it? Um, how did that all come about? And you know, when did when did they come to you? Did they specifically say we want an app built on WordPress? Did they want an iOS app or a native app? And you were like, you know what? We can actually do this with this thing called WordPress. How did that all go down? 
So with the Dallas Museum of Art, we partnered with a <clears throat> couple of agencies on that. One is um, Learning Times. And they are into kind of the um, education space on the web, not necessarily WordPress or anything like that, but just helping educators make information more accessible to um, their audience. And so it's kind of their focus, and they approached us about the potential of utilizing WordPress and BuddyPress um, for an application that they were thinking of doing for the museum. And, you know, as it happened, nobody had ever really done apps or iPad apps or iOS apps or anything with WordPress before, but that's really never stopped um, us <laughs> from, you know, thinking, well, you know, this definitely could be done. And so we started approaching it with um, the idea that this might work. Um, and they were willing to kind of take a chance on the fact that it was going to actually come to fruition. So we really didn't have a framework to go by or any other model that was out there because nobody else was doing it before. Mm, right. um, but we did end up doing the um, application for Dallas Museum of Art where people can, you know, they can come into the museum and visit the iPad kiosks and log in and check in to the different things. Um, and then the YMCA is also one that we did it for with the same group, Learning Times. Um, to create those apps, um, which was really cool. I mean, it was a really cool thing to do. We were doing it um, for a private client, um, so it wasn't anything that was really published out there, but um, Matt caught wind of it, and it was pretty awesome for him to be showcasing that in his state of the world. Yeah. Uh, it looked like an amazing, from the outside, it looked like an amazing project. It looked, you know, beautiful and, and interactive, and it really, I guess, showcased uh, the power um, of WordPress and, and what can be done. Definitely. Give folks just a rough timeline. I mean, how, how long did that take uh, for a project like that from start to finish to roll out? Oh, nine, nine to ten months. Okay, not bad. Not bad. Um, and now has that project, is that any plans to like bring that into AppPressor, make that a, a more native app, uh, or is that strictly just running on the web? That's for Dallas Museum of Art, that's strictly running on the web for cool. them because it integrates a lot of different um, integration points like with our badge OS uh, mm -hmm. plugins and um, other social media and, and some of their internal network stuff so mm -hmm. it's definitely going to stay a separate project. Yeah um, and this is important for those of you out there I mean selling WordPress and different aspects of selling WordPress you know with, with responsive and, and even targeting you know, mobile port views and things like that you can uh, as long as you're designing it uh, and thinking of the usability you know, the, the most simplistic way of accepting data in form fields could could be given in some kind of app feel and, and sort of the membership levels and, and access to data in the back end. All of this stuff can be accomplished by WordPress, which is which is amazing. So let's get back to AppPressor. Um, Scott, you come up with the idea, you pitch it to Brad. Um, what was it like? What was that first uh, iteration like or that first very first, first alpha version like um, <laughs> from start to finish? Um, well, or, or start to start to hear anyway. <laughs> <laughs> when when I uh, when we first started out, I thought I had an idea of kind of what we were going to do, and um, eventually we were actually going to develop everything from scratch. So we were going to say like, if you wanted to use the camera, we were going to be like writing the code that you know made like every little piece that made everything work with the camera and on Android, and then separately on iOS and all this stuff, and. Um, I'm really glad we didn't end up doing it that way because it probably never would have happened. Um, luckily, kind of along the way, I think we we were like, if we do this, it's going to take forever. So we kind of looked for a framework um, to work with, and and that ended up being PhoneGap, and which PhoneGap is great because it's all open source and free, and um, it, it's been they're on like past version three now, so they've been around for a long time. And they have uh, they're, they're a very proven system, and they've been working on it a lot. And so integrating that with WordPress ended up being a really good decision because it saved us a lot of time and it also added this docu well-documented, this established framework that already had all the device features kind of worked out. And then we had to build a bridge with that to WordPress. And um, so, so yeah, that was good. But I, I think along the way, a lot of different problems came up that had didn't really, we didn't know if there was going to be a solution and we didn't know how to solve it. But 
um, it, it ended up working out. There's the, there was points along the way where I that was like, if we can't figure this out, like app presser is dead. And I was like, there was a couple different times where I was like, I I don't even know if this is gonna work. I you know. Can you give I, us one ex I, one example of of a speed bump that you hit that you were like, I don't think we're gonna overcome this, but you eventually did. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, when we were first starting developing the camera, the I, I was messing with it on my local machine and like taking a picture with the simulator and like trying to put the picture into WordPress and it was there was this error that said like this security error of like the the browser security error or something and I was like I, I don't even know if this is going to be fixed and everything um, I, I was like I, if we can't do this then then we're not going to be able to do any of the other features and this was very early and so I. You know, I, I just thought, oh man, this this sucks. Like we can't. It's, this isn't even possible. You know, like no one's ever tried to do it before because it's not even possible. So, um, but yeah, eventually we ended up getting over that speed bump, and then a lot of the other ones. And and then we were kind of curious whether Apple was going to have any sort of problem with what we were doing because it's kind of different and new. But you know, obviously they didn't. They they passed us with you know first try. So um, that was another big speed bump I was worried about. But um, yeah, it all kind of worked out. That you you bring up uh, one of the talking points that I was going to uh, talk about later. What was that like to, you know, what you're doing is building a framework for all of these people to submit apps to Apple. So of course, like my first uh, thought as a, a business owner, as an entrepreneur, is like, wow, how the heck are they going to present this to Apple? You know, who everyone knows about Apple. You can't even get your product in the store if it's not packaged correctly. Mm -hmm. uh, and and by store I mean the physical store, let alone all the the restrictions that they have for their apps. What was that? What was that conversation like? The co conversation. What do you mean? Uh, with Apple. With Apple. Uh, and and letting them know what it was that you were building. Yeah. Well, I mean, we didn't actually have a conversation with them at all. It was more like we submitted an app and they approved it. Um, okay. But they they have a bunch of guidelines and everything that you have to follow. And PhoneGap takes care of a lot of the uh, tech technical aspects, so when you build it with uh, PhoneGap Build, they make sure that all the technical stuff is there, and then they have guidelines for you for what you're supposed to do, but um, yeah, there was a lot of research there in the beginning of what kind of you can and can't do with apps and what they expect, and so we tried to make that, um, you know, get it right on the first try, and I, I was kind of worried they were going to come back and say, well, you need to tweak this or tweak that. Um, but they didn't. So um, I think as long as you do a little bit of homework and you know App Presser and PhoneGap mm -hmm. together take care of some of that stuff for you. But um, it's important to do some homework on what Apple is looking for us in terms of apps. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're not trying to just wrap normal websites and and, and just consume content in these apps. There there has to be some sort of interactivity. So you know, using the camera or you're accessing the contacts or whatever, there has to be a reason for the app and it has to be useful to a lot of people. And I think if those two things, those two general guidelines are there, then I think you know you'll be okay. Mm. So Lisa, as a as sort of a managing partner over at at the studio, <laughs> and you see sort of like these uh, speed bumps coming, and you see Scott, uh, you know, pulling his proverbial hair out, saying, you know, I can't get through this. I don't have any hair. To pull out. <laughs> um, <laughs> what is it? That uh, what's running through your mind, um, you know, as, as far as the project, um, are you, um, you know, digging in the trenches with them, or are you flying at thirty thousand feet, offering some advice? Uh, what was it like for you? Um, for the most part, Scott and Brad and Brian, uh, a couple members of our team, are in the trenches with the code. Um, I'm kind of more helping manage the the marketing effort and things like that. But watching this go on over the past summer and um, you know, we've all got a group chat going on, and all of a sudden we'll bring up this error that's coming up or this problem that's coming up, and it's like, oh. <laughs> you know, it was like Scott said, you know, at, at some point you start thinking, is this really going to work? And as I mentioned before, there's no model for us to kind of follow, not necessarily copy, but follow to look at, you know, it's not like we're developing a forms plugin for WordPress and we can look at gravity forms and go well they're doing it you know this is the way they're doing it and this is the method that they're using um, so there's really wasn't a method for us to follow for that so I think it was a little bit hair pulling for everybody because it really was um, very new to all of us and it was a question as to whether or not like Scott said those security issues were going to get worked out whether or not Apple was going to even approve apps that were submitted with App Plusser. Um, I mean, if, if Apple didn't approve it, that kind of killed App Presser. Right. You know, so um, when we made that first submission, that was a big hallelujah moment because then we knew 
mm. that this was really going to take off. Was there any uh, backup plan to Apple saying no to this product? There's no backup plan to Apple saying no. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. That's just, just Apple saying no. Then then we would have been like an Android app service. And yeah, and that wouldn't have been very good for anybody. Um, yeah. Speaking about that, I mean, did you did you weigh any of that like marketing? Did you look at you know just if hey if they if they if Apple says no, we we go to Android. Uh, did you look at the Android market and just say no, this isn't big enough or 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 there's not enough opportunity here? We're we're doing Android apps too, so okay. we, so it is iOS and Android. But without iOS, um, it's not much of a service, you know. So mm -hmm. if you're like just yeah. like the, that's a, just such a small market that would do only Android apps. Mm. I mean, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, Scott, but I think if we couldn't have wrangled iOS approval, um, AppPressor probably would not have gone forward. Yeah, <clears throat> no, we would have killed it for sure. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, and that's um, obviously a very scary, uh, you know, proposition. I mean, you're what you're doing is a lot of entrepreneurs don't know if they'll get the right client or if they'll even sell their plugin or theme or service. Um, you get one person to impress, <laughs> you know, one quote unquote person to impress, and that's Apple, uh, and that's probably through some, you know, real quick uh, approval process. And it's like you don't even get to talk to these people, like you said. Um, well, you can email them. I think if they reject it, you they kind of tell you why. You can email them and mm -hmm. you know appeal to it or whatever. But mm -hmm. yeah, you don't you don't get to have like a thirty minute conversation with like you know somebody at Apple or something. Right. You know? Right. Um, so that's good. Now, what what was it like to you finally overcome some of these some of these speed bumps? You've got your first beta uh, version. Did you get it into the hands of of beta testers who have never touched the product before? What was that experience like? Yeah, that was really good. Um, it, we yeah, so we did a beta period for about a month in December and got it. it we had quite a few beta testers and uh, a lot of people using it. That, that helped us out a lot just as far as like what hosting systems were going to be weird about it and have little weird bugs, which they did. Um, and then, you know, which plugins were just, just random plugins that we didn't even know about were going to cause conflicts and obviously refining the product as we went. Um, so that, that was a good, good testing time. Mm -hmm. And then, you yeah, know, we released so last week um, out of the beta because I, I think we had enough testing to, uh, to, to say the product is solid now. Mm. And what was that like when you're when people start interacting with you know the sort of baby you've been uh, working on for the last nine months to ten months, and then all of a sudden they're like, oh, I thought it was you know I thought it was going to be easier, or I thought it was going to look better, or you know what was that like? What was that experience like? And probably continues to be like today. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, so far, I, we haven't had any feedback like that really. Um, but I, I, we try to make it really clear what AppPressor does and does not do because there could be some confusion about it. Like it's it's not a WYSIWYG app creator and um, it's not, you know, auto this and auto that. I mean, the e-commerce app is turnkey, actually. You can do that very, like very easily. But um, the, as far as the components and things, I, I hope we were clear about it. It, it. There hasn't been too much confusion yet, but... Mm -hmm. What is the uh, give us the uh, the flyby of the e-commerce uh, portion? What does it what does it do, and how does it solve uh, a need? Lisa, so the e-commerce portion of it um, hooks in with WooCommerce at the moment. So we've got several extensions like AppWoo and our app theme and app swiper, which creates the carousels of products. Um, app camera, which hooks into the camera feature. So pretty much anybody that's running an e-commerce store with WordPress and WooCommerce can use our e-commerce bundle to create an app for iOS Store or Google Play to put their app up um, for users to then use and purchase stuff on the web or on, on their app. Um, one of the first, well actually the first application that we had approved in the Apple Store is called House of Rags. And you can find the link on our blog at appresser.com, but if you search the Apple Store for House of Rags, you'll find a woman's clothing store. Um, they've got a very nice WordPress-powered website at houseofrags.com with WooCommerce, but then they've also got an application in the iOS Store that complements what they're providing on the web. 
so people can download the app and they can browse through the selections that they have there. Um, they can purchase items. They can even take photos of, you know, once they receive the items, they can take photos and upload their own photos of the products and rate them. Um, so it, it makes a really nice application platform for e-commerce sites that are running WooCommerce. Nice. That's yeah, right. Uh, Z, by the way, too. Right. With a Z, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Uh, um, so let's talk a little bit about that. I, I, let's actually move to the to the pricing of the product, and then we'll sort of explore the marketing that you're doing. Uh, I think I wrote a piece uh, last last week um, talking about the pricing um, of App Presser, and for 500 bucks, you get the whole shebang uh, with the year's worth of support. I know from my own experience working with some of my clients and looking for um, native iOS developers, one comes to mind, uh, which is SourceBits, and I've had a conversation with them before, you know, and they're not moving anything <laughs> for less than 100,000 bucks, and they want a commitment, um, you know, they want contracts and things like that, and then I said, I think if you can go and, sure, you can go and uh, Elance or Odesk or even a smaller agency, and you're probably talking 10 to, to 20,000 you know, retail, if you were a customer coming in to, to build this. So for 500 bucks, somebody could resell their app or their app service to a client for, say, 5,000 bucks, 10,000 um, bucks. Thoughts on pricing um, and going in at the $500 level? Um, did you shop around? Did you get some feedback from other iOS developers? What was that like? Yeah, we looked at, there's a lot of kind of app build services that are non-WordPress related, so we looked at those. A lot of those are actually monthly fees. Um, some of them have like hosted app building solutions, so they have a monthly fee. Um, I'm not a big fan of monthly fees, and I, I, don't, I think most people probably aren't, uh, or probably the same way also. So we kind of, it didn't really make sense with a WordPress product that you're downloading to do a monthly fee. So, and then we looked at just normal WordPress products because obviously these are themes and plugins. And so we can look at theme and plugin pricing, but there was nobody really that had already established a market standard for this price. So that was tough. Um, we actually had a call with Shane Perlman um, who was nice enough to give us an hour of his time and just sort of talk to us about what he's learned and, and what we can kind of look at for pricing. But we kind of settled at a price that we just thought was fair for everyone, and it, it was inexpensive enough for a small, you know, maybe a single sole proprietor shop to actually make an app and resell it and make some money. And then it was high enough to where um, this is not just like a normal plugin or theme that you're buying. Um, you know, it's it's going to be a little bit more expensive because it's you can charge your clients more for this. So um, I'm not sure. Chris Lemus th thinks that we price it too low. So um, I, you know, I I, I I don't know. It's like <laughs> you just <laughs> I don't know. Well, time will tell. You know. Yeah. Uh, yeah it again goes anybody's... back to the fact that there's no model out there for us. Right. Yeah. Have you had anybody say, "Hey, I want to buy this, but I don't want to pay 500 bucks"? Has that happened yet? Actually, our, the agency bundle has been the most popular product so far. Um, there's been some launch discounts, so um, I couldn't tell you what that's going to be like in the future. Mm -hmm. But um, no, nobody's complained yet about mm -hmm. the price, like at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we um, have had a few people that wanted like a free trial before they purchased. Mm -hmm. um, and and we've had, we've had a couple of comments like that. But. And how come no free trial? Is it because there's no way to lock it down? Um, that's, 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 that's why. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so like you said, there's no model. No one else is really doing this. How the hell does one market <laughs> a product <laughs> like this when there is nothing well, on else? On shows like yours, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good question. Uh, I mean, if you have any advice, we'd be happy to take it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, but what are your what are your common factors now? Are you just going around? Um, you know the the WordPress community at large, and and you know hopping on shows like this and and doing blog posts. Anything unique that you're that you're planning on doing in the next few months? I think the biggest unique factor that we are going to have is being able to show off apps that people are building, and I think that is probably going to be the biggest um, selling point for people to start realizing what exactly it is AppPressor is is doing and how people are using it. So as people are creating apps and, and letting us know, you know, we're more than happy to showcase those apps 
um, on our site, on you know wherever we can, just to show people how AppCrosser is being used. And then um, the learning curve, you know, just getting people to understand uh, what AppCrosser is and what it's not. Like Scott said, you know, it's not a WYSIWYG, you know, app creator. It's something that requires a bit of work. Um, you know, and just getting the word out there that mobile app creation is simplified. Mm. Mm. Now, with WordPress, it, it is more accessible than it would be to the um, developers that you and I know in the WordPress community, um, and more accessible to our clients. Mm. Um, I have this sort of crazy uh, conception that websites are going to be dead in five years, right, as we know it. Um, do you guys kind of feel like this is a more strategical long-term, like, hey, I don't really know if people are going to be browsing on desktops the way they do today. Let's move to the app scene. Um, I don't know. Five years ago, people were saying that blogs were going to be dead. And I don't, I don't think they necessarily are. That's right. That's um, right. Yeah. But the world is moving into more of a more mobile space. I don't know if it's necessarily going to replace the desktop experience, hmm. um, but I think for most businesses out there, um, if they're not, if they don't have a mobile presence, they're behind the curve. Hmm. Um, perfect segue to one of the Twitter questions um, is um, that came in was uh, who's using uh, App Presser now, and I and I think you you already uh, mentioned that. Um, or I guess this question uh, comes from Mike. I can't really tell what his last name is because he's got some weird ASCII stuff going on. <laughs> uh, it's at Fickle Mike uh, on Twitter. Um, what kind of people are using App Presser so far? I think you've already mentioned uh, one. Um, and then Krogsgard made a good point. And this is coming from Mike. Um, made a good point. We all want this, but not everyone needs an app. Um, any rebuttal or, or statements towards that? Yeah, I mean, I think that's obvious. Like, not everybody needs an app, but this this product is not for everybody. It's for those people who need an app. So um, we always set out with AppPressor to create a system that's going to help people make real, useful, interactive apps, not just a website wrapper, not just, uh, you know, a cookie cutter thing. Like, you can go to a bunch of different websites and just put your URL in, and it'll make some dumb little app for you that doesn't do anything. And so that's that's not what we want to do. We want people to actually like use their brains and make really useful stuff and have clients come to them and make really cool apps for their clients that actually do something that the website doesn't do. Mm. Um, so, so yeah, obviously that's not for everybody, but um, I think if people sort of start mulling this over in their mind and get creative, I think a lot of cool apps can come out of it. Nice. Uh, what's the biggest challenge that you guys are facing now? Um, is it the marketing aspect? Is it selling it? Is it supporting it? Is it scaling it? What is it? Um, um, go okay. ahead, Lisa. <laughs> uh, marketing it is is a challenge, I think. Um, a, you market it like you would market any product, for one thing. So that, that part's easy. Um, but the education and getting people, again, it goes back to understanding what AppPressor is and what AppPressor isn't. I think when we were um, creating our website and the documentation and, you know, the frequently asked questions and features and things like that, our biggest hurdle was really putting the information out there and explaining it to people in a way that they understand what AppPressor is and how you use it. Um, I think that, from a selling standpoint, um, is, a, is a challenge for us, and hopefully we are doing it correctly. And I think that we will refine that as we get you know, more feedback from people in terms of how they are understanding AppPressor and what they are understanding it to be. Nice. Uh, is it fair to say that, and I've seen a few of your talks uh, at WordCamps, is it fair to say that the painter's house is always the hardest to paint? Like when you're sitting there and you're trying to figure out how do we, we build websites all day long for other people, and then it comes down to building our own sites, and we're like, where the hell do we start? <laughs> like, is, it, yeah. is it fair to say that's challenging, or do you have a process that you just you just know aside from going through your entire development process? But do you sit down and say, okay, I'm just going to follow the same path that I follow for our own clients? Not necessarily, because you know w when we do client sites, um, you know we're doing the development, we're doing the design, we're not necessarily doing the copy for them. We're looking to them and saying, you know, give us the copy, we'll put it where you want it, and we'll make it look the way you want it to. 
but you're responsible for that content and that copy. <clears throat> when it comes to um, our own websites, whether it's webdevstudios.com or apppressor.com, um, I just, you know, you sit there and stare at the screen like, <laughs> mm. uh, maybe I should get one of my clients to write the copy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but it, it, it has been. It's been a challenge because there's a lot that we can say about AppPressor, but who wants to log into a website and read 10 paragraphs of information before you figure out, you know, what what the product is? Mm. So between myself and Scott and Brad, I think we've done a uh, a good job of explaining what AppPressor is and how people will use it. Is there a big challenge on your end, Scott, from the technical side and, and maybe scaling to another feature or function that's happening? Yeah, definitely. So there's a couple, I mean, we obviously have some cool features coming down the line like, uh, you know, push notifications and stuff like that. And so those are, those are pretty complex features and, um, yeah. So the te there's a technical challenges with it with every single new feature, and so um, getting those out the door is tough. And then now that we've actually launched, having to do support and marketing and all this kind of stuff uh, simultaneously, that's going to be a challenge. And it's only been a week, but um, I, I think we're going to have to kind of just adjust and figure out how to get that going. But um, we have a really good team of devs, and I mean, like Brian and Justin are. I think they might be working on stuff right now, um, but they're just incredibly talented guys, and so the stuff they can do just blows me away. And uh, so yeah, I, I have a full confidence in them. So it's just a matter of really how much time you know everybody can be on development and not on other stuff. Mm. Yeah, the really nice thing about um, the partnership is that Scott's partnered with Web Dev Studios. So he's got, you know, AppPressor has access to our full team. And one of the great things about our team is that they're not scared of mm -hmm. new things or to try new things or to break things. You know, nothing really intimidates them. So they kind of go at it with this full gusto mode and um, tackle it until until it's killed and done and taken care of. So it's it's been a great process to watch the development yeah. of all of this. Yeah, yeah I, I get blown away, man. Brian's like, yeah, I'm going to be working on this certain feature, and then, like, I won't hear from him, like, all day, and then he'll be like, uh, yeah, it's pretty much done, and so he'll, like, show me something, like, dang, that's cool, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Um, I mean, you bring up another good point, and not to put you both on the spot, although I would have loved to put Brad on the spot if you were here, um, <laughs> you know, I think that, obviously, we always talk about the community, and the community, this community is a, a, super, a really unique uh, community, right, where we all kind of either work together, even though some of, or most of us are in quote unquote competition with it with each other. Uh, we're all offering maybe same same products and services. Obviously, not app pressers are unique, but uh, for Scott to come to Web Dev and sort of partner up, um, you know, how, so far um, looks like things are going smoothly. Scott, did you have any kind of doubt partnering with you know partnering with somebody and not just taking this this idea and, and launching it on your own? Well, I knew I didn't have the skills, just me, to get something like this done. And, and honestly, even if I did, I think it's better to go with someone else because I just wanted it to go quickly and be very um, visible. And if I was going to do it myself, it would have been a much slower process. So, But yeah, I think this is a kind of a unique partnership. Um, and I'm very excited about it. And um, I'm really happy that you know WebDev joined up with me for this. Um, but yeah, you're right. I think just the community that we have where, you know, I just kind of randomly met and talked to Brad a couple of times at some word camps and then, you know, now we're in this cool business together and um, along with Lisa and Brian and I think that's that's fairly unique and, and pretty cool. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, we're going to jump into the last few segments of the show. Before we do, just want to thank our sponsor again, WP SiteCare, WordPress support made simple. Focus on your business not on your blog, uh, get all your updates, all your security done uh, by the guys over at WPSiteCare.com. Last two segments, what's in your toolbox? This is where I typically ask one entrepreneur on the show, but we have two of you today. Uh, what unique app are you using that folks might not know about um, on your laptop, on your iPad that helps you get through the day? Uh, might be like an Evernote, a Gmail. Do you have some top secret app that you use that folks might not know about? Lisa, you got something? Um, I don't know if my apps are top secret or not, but my day is spent in Sublime Text 2 for yeah. text editing, um, and I use Tower for uh, Git. 
those two items, um, those two apps right there, it's pretty much 85% of my day. <laughs> nice. Scott? Oh, crap. I'm looking for something that's going to be, like, <laughs> cool and different. But, um, so I'm using, well, I really like uh, CodeKit, but everybody knows about that one. Um, I'm, I, I switched over to AirMail recently from instead of MacMail because my MacMail was destroyed with Mavericks. So I'm really liking AirMail. So it's just a mail client. Nice. I'll have to look at it. I was using Sparrow for a while, and then they got bought out, and I haven't returned. I don't even know if there's a version you can get anymore. I just can't seem to get away from Gmail. I have like five. I just use Gmail. Yeah, that's all yeah. I need. Yeah. I have like five addresses, and I just have five tabs open. <laughs> and I'm just like, okay. it just works. Sweet. Uh, we're going to jump into, I already answered the listener question, so we're going to jump into the lightning round. We'll ask you a series of quick questions, and you'll have a series of quick answers. Um, I don't know how we're going to do this with both, but I think we can just start with Scott and then go to Lisa. Scott, Lisa. Okay. I, I won't make it confusing like Scott, Lisa, Lisa, Scott. <laughs> Lisa, Lisa. So Scott first, Lisa second. Right. Okay. <laughs> uh, what's the one plugin you can't live without? Um... App presser? No, Gravity Forms. <laughs> Gravity Forms. Gravity uh, Forms. A, a favorite WordPress or business book besides your own and besides Brad? Oh. Oh, man. Um, I have to Google. <laughs> uh, business, career, WordPress, development, design, any kind of book. Yeah. Um, I really like Seth Godin's books and... Um, I really like What the Dog Saw by Malcolm Gladwell. It's just like a collection of his stories, which is, that was entertaining. Cool. Yeah. I like, um, one of the recent books that I got was a, it's a sketch noting book by Mike Rohde. Mike Rohde is, a, he's a designer and illustrator in the Milwaukee area, so I'm a little partial due to geographic location, but if you're interested in sketch noting and, and that type of thing for note taking, it's a really great book. Nice. What's a quote that you live or run your business by? Matt, these are really hard on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> the pressure of the lightning round. If you don't have it, you can just say pass. Uh, pass. So Thomas Edison, when he was inventing the light bulb, failed so many times, but he said, I, I didn't fail, I just found 200,000 ways that didn't work. Nice. That's awesome. That's so good. You, have, you really have that just in your pocket? Scott, you're getting, really Scott, you're getting smoked if we were keeping score. <laughs> I totally am. <laughs> uh, what's the best business or career advice you ever received? Uh, I would say fail fast and fail often. Uh, it, it, it's a phrase that goes, it is what it is, which means don't uh, spend a lot of time over things that you have no control over. That's awesome. Uh, what's the longest a client project has ever taken? Um, does it does that include like hiatuses where you don't hear from the client for yeah. like months and months? <laughs> yeah, that's yeah that that's certainly included. Uh, I would say probably like a year. Nice. I would say too long, but a year probably. Nice. I think the longest uh, running record so far might be like four years. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> same thing, like waiting for waiting to hear from them and and waiting for content, all that fun stuff. Wow. If you had to switch to another content management system, what would it be? Um, none. Static. I would probably go static. Wow. Uh, a lot of people have been saying ghost lately. Um, who should I interview next? And only you can only give me one answer for this if you want. Justin Sternberg. That's a good one. Mm. That's a really good one. Extraordinaire at Web Dev Studios. Yeah, he really is. Um, have you interviewed Chris Lemma lately? Not lately, but I have in the past. He's a good one. Yeah, I'll get him back on. Do some kind of special episode with him. Uh, sweet. What's the one question that I didn't ask you that I should have? It Maybe advice to other startup entrepreneurs mm. that we've learned from Matt Presser. Mm. You, do you both want to collectively answer that question right now? Sure, I will. Um, I would say it's it can be really, really hard at times. It's not always fun, but um, you know, it, it can be worth it. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. 
Sorry, I totally just rambled on, but Lisa, do you say something really cool and insightful? Just destroy me on that one. <laughs> what was the question? <laughs> you rambled so much, I lost the question. <laughs> it was uh, advice for the startup, uh, for the young startup entrepreneur today. Oh gosh. My advice usually revolves around um, education. And, you know, when you're running your business in, in WordPress or any, any industry, for that matter, technology, um, it's a rat race to do marketing, to do client management, project management, all of this stuff. You just need to absolutely be sure that you are carving out time in your week-to-week -week schedule to educate yourself on what's new, what's up and coming. Um, otherwise, you miss really innovative things like app pressing. Mm, absolutely. Like that. <laughs> like that. Go out and try to copy this model, is what you should say. <laughs> right. <laughs> Get some t-shirts made um, for WordCamps. Uh, awesome show, awesome journey. I wish you the best success. Um, it's an awesome product, um, you know, and I think that's going to bring a ton of value, especially uh, to, the, to the service entrepreneurs out there who are starting their WordPress businesses. Um, you know, it's great things to come. So, uh, you know, good luck and tremendous stuff. Uh, Scott, where can folks find you on the web to say thanks? At Scott Bollinger, Twitter. Lisa. Uh, at Lisa Saban Wilson on Twitter. And who wants to promote AppPressor? Where can that be found? AppPressor.com. Sweet. At AppPressor on Twitter. Nice. Yep. Awesome. Well, thanks, guys. Thanks for doing the show, and we'll see you next time. Thank you, Matt. Thanks.